Hi there, who are you? I'm Jeff Bezos. And what, are you, what is your claim to fame? <laughs> I'm the founder of Amazon.com. Where did you get an idea for Amazon.com? Well, three years ago, I was in New York City working for a quantitative hedge fund when I came across the startling statistic that web usage was growing at 2,300% a year. So I decided I would try and find a business plan that made sense in the context of that growth. And I picked books as the first best product to sell online. Yes, that is Amazon founder Jeff Bezos being interviewed on the sidelines of a tech conference in 1997. At that point, few could have imagined that over the next couple of decades, Amazon would help him become one of the most powerful men in the world and its wealthiest. Joining us now, Wall Street Journal reporter Dana Mattioli. Her new book out today titled The Everything War, Amazon's Ruthless Quest to Own the World and remake corporate power. It's so great to have you. Congratulations on the book. So I know this is a long question, but how do we get from that version of Jeff Bezos to today, where he's the wealthiest guy in the world, or one of them, depending on the day, and the business he built is so powerful that it touches everyone's life in one way or another? It's, it's really strange in 2024 to remember that that company started as this against all odds online bookseller. And from there just cornered every part of retail. But that wasn't Bezos's goal. He wanted to make Amazon this daily habit. And that's the company you see today. It's the most dominant force in online e-commerce. It is the biggest cloud computing company in the world. It's the biggest parcel carrier in the US. And those are just some of its massive tentacles. And so did he have in that video in 1997, we said, yeah, we're just a book company. Was he already thinking to where we are today in 2024, or at least thinking much bigger than books. Yeah, there were signs he was. There's a scene in the book where he tells another CEO that your margin is my opportunity. And his his reach for what this company could be was really just unlimited. So Dana, there is <clears throat> virtually nothing you cannot find to purchase on Amazon, nothing. And. How does it work? If I want to sell something on Amazon, how do I get my product on Amazon? Do I get charged for it? Do I pay them? How much do I pay them? Can they raise the price for me if I'm selling a lot of goods? How does it work? First of all, it's really easy to get on to Amazon.com and start selling. You could do that in a matter of days. And uh, because 40% of all e-commerce in, in the country happens there, Amazon knows that sellers need to be there and they've been able to ratchet up their fees really steeply over the last decade. It's gone from something like 19% a decade ago to nearly 50% today. So there's this Amazon tax in essence. And when I speak to sellers about that, who tell me that they have to be there, if they're not there, they're not going to have sales, they've had to raise their prices to offset those fees because their margins are being compressed. Mm. Can I ask you about the flip side of it though, which is clearly there's been an explosion of opportunity for individuals, small businesses all over the country, also in places that historically had not had access to customers insofar as they could be in a small town. And ostensibly, the marketplace of Amazon has opened that up in a really, really big way. And so the balance of how you think about that benefit mm -hmm. on one end versus potentially some of the costs that, that those merchants are having to, uh, to pay on the other end. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely getting more the equivalent of foot traffic if you're on Amazon than if you're just in a small town in the middle of the country. Right. But what I would say is there's, you know, I spoke to some sellers. One of them took over his dad's family business. That was a local business, not making very sexy things like big industrial containers and doormats for, for companies. And he wanted to digitize it. So he took the family business, put it on Amazon and exploded to $10 million in revenue a year, which sounds great at first blanche. After all of his fees, advertising on the site, logistics, overhead, that $10 million turns into $30,000 in profits at the end of the year because the fees have exploded so much. Mm. And that's what some of these sellers are grappling with. So you call uh, Bezos a modern day Rockefeller, which cuts a couple of different mm -hmm. ways. What do you mean when you say that? Well, actually, when uh, Lena Khan, the head of the FTC, was researching the seminal law review article about Amazon back in 2017, she made parallels between Jeff Bezos and Rockefeller, obviously the head of the Gilded Age Monopoly, Standard Oil. She saw similarities in their business practices, bullying their competitors, spying on competitors, um, predatory pricing. And that was part of the basis for why she looked into the company to begin with. So when you think now, I mean, it's hard to imagine Amazon could be any more ubiquitous than it is. But where are they looking for the next 20 years? What does Amazon still have ahead of it? 
Yeah, it's really interesting. In the midst of all these regulators around the world calling Amazon a monopoly, their current CEO, Andy Jassy, has said, we're not big enough. He's told his deputies that this could be a $10 trillion company 10 years from now. And um, they don't seem to be all that phased by this lawsuit against them from the FTC. A few weeks after it was dropped, um, their general counsel got on stage at Amazon for this all-hands meeting. And he was asked, you know, what's the outlook here? And he basically said, it's like a Taylor Swift song. Haters are going to hate. We're going to shake it off. Mm. Andrew, it does seem like the potential is almost limitless if it becomes the place where everything is sold. Well, I think that's the real question in terms of the size and scale of Amazon. Currently, you know, Amazon would tell you that they are a small slice of the full retail pie. And in truth, if you include all of the brick and mortar stores and all of the retail that's going on, they are a small portion of it. The question is, do you define the world as you know, brick and mortar, digital, everything? Do you find it as just the biggest digital stores in the country? I mean, that Lena Khan sort of defines it like that. I think there's a real question as to sort of what you think the marketplace really looks like. We did get a statement into NBC News, Amazon, responding to some of the reporting in Dana's new book, writing that over the past three decades, the company has, quote, made shopping easier and more convenient for customers, spurred lower prices, enabled millions of successful small businesses, and significantly increased competition in retail. That was a statement from Amazon. The new book is titled The Everything War, Amazon's Ruthless Quest to Own the World and Remake Corporate Power. It's fascinating. Wall Street Journal reporter Dana Mattioli, thanks so much. Congrats on the book. Thank you so much. And Andrew Ross Sorkin, this time Thank I you. mean it. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Bye. Still have hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.